Alrighty guys, in today's video, it's just gonna be a short clip of explaining some tuning tips on these SSR 125 and the Apollo 125. So, gonna go through each bike, uh, the jetting specs that's inside the carbs, the carbs uh, sizes themselves, and uh, just what they came with stock and then what we ended up with in the end. And we'll do a little startup and a, a throttle response type. I put the Nibby 22 millimeter, it's a PE, 22 millimeter FL, if it has it at the end, possibly. The FL just means it's a flange mount, which is gonna be the two bolts. Um, they make the same carburetors in the uh, brown spigot style as well. So for these, if for a direct bolt on, you're gonna want the FL. What comes in the carb stock? It came with the needle clip one from the bottom, which would be the fourth position. It came with a 32 pilot and a 98 main. And the air screw is set around two turns. So right now our air screw's at one and a half turns. That's from lightly seated, backing it out one and a half turns. Needle clip, I went all the way rich, fifth position, one through five. So fifth position on the clip. Pilot jet, we increased to a 40. And you're probably gonna have to get the Nibby Racing Jet Kit in order to get a 40 pilot. The main jet, I went to a 102, from a 98 to a 102. Just gave it a little more fuel. Pulled out clean in the top end, um, so I left it with that. And that's about it for the tuning specs on the 22. The 22, guys, is going to be the best bet for a 110, 125cc pit bike. Anybody that tells you you need a bigger <clears throat> carburetor is lying. You cannot tune them rich enough or lean enough. It will not help. And he has the Nibby High Flow air filter, right? Yep, Nibby High Flow. Uh, it's a little different than the one that Sol has. He'll show his in just a second here. But this one basically has a piece of foam and then the cone over the top of it, so it very, very, very little restriction on this air filter. So that's why we had to richen up everything. Um, it does act a little rich in the low end, but to get it responsive, you have to have it pretty much on the edge of pig rich in the bo bottom end. I could possibly tweak the needle back to the middle clip position if, if I desired to, but honestly, the way it runs right now, it starts hot good, it starts cold good. There's really no point in changing anything. And that's an easy adjustment too. You don't have to take up the carb at all. Right. I think all the internal hard work has been done now with the 102 main jet, the 40 pilot. Honestly, I don't think I need to go any bigger because I can tweak the air screw in or out. Like I said, one and a half turns there. Stock intake spacer. Running a Chinese spark plug, not even an NGK. Stock exhaust pipe. eBay slip-on. 28 mil. 28 millimeter. Just walled it out a little bit to fit. So that's the story on my bike. We'll go on to the Apollo quick. And I'll have Saul talk about that one. He's got a little more modifications done. All right, guys, this is a 2019 Apollo 007. And these things are just wicked fast stock. Stupid, stupid. But anyways, um, as you guys have maybe seen on the channel before, I robbed the FMS, the, the famous FMF pipe off of my 110 that we've had. That's like a staple of the channel, honestly, that 110. And uh, <clears throat> this has the 24 millimeter flange mounted nibby with the, I don't even know what they call this one, but it's just the Nibby Racing cone filter. It's basically just a generic cone pod filter, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, and you, It's really nice because you can angle it. I have it kind of angled up now to kind of stay out of the way. So this bike came stock with a 112 or a 110. It was either a 110 or a 112 main jet and a 35 pilot, I want to say. Yeah, that sounds right. And I think it came with uh, middle needle clip position. The, it'd be technically the third, yeah. you know, it's in between the, the two and four. And basically all I did right away was just bump up jetting, which you don't need to bump the main jet because when I did that, I went to a 115, I think I went to, mm -hmm. and it was super sputtery on top. So knock that down to a 108. Ran really good, but just the bottom needed to be cleaned out. So I went from a 35 to a 42 to a 48 pilot mm -hmm. jet. And it doesn't idle the best hot, cold. It idles great, but it doesn't idle the best hot. It, you know, it'll idle for a little bit, and then it kind of gets flooded out with fuel, right. which is expected on a bigger, too, it's pretty much too big for what the bike needs to have. Mm -hmm. Like we said, a 19, or uh, was it 22? 22. The 22 is probably all you would need. Yeah, on a bike, 125 and smaller. Maybe on a 140, it'd be a little better application. Right. But other than that, uh, fuel air screw, I think right now around two turns. Yep. And then, yeah, like I said, 
you want to give him a shot of this barrel. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, we're also running, like I said, not a stock pipe. This is a full FMF. Full FMF. And just the expansion from here to here is just such a crazy diameter compared to a stock pipe. Exactly. But I would say for best overall <laughs> performance for the everyday user that wants a little more pep, the 22. Yeah. Less, yep. less messing around, and it's yep. going to run a little cleaner than having to overly rich in the low end on this bigger carb to make it snappy enough to have fun on. Right. Not saying you can't do it because obviously we've done it. Right. But anybody that tells you you need a 26 or 20, I mean, the 24, you're pushing it. Like I said, mm -hmm. honestly, you could probably run a 19. A 19, especially for a 110. I think a 19 would be a best case application. Yeah. So a 22 definitely is the best scenario. The jetting that I described to you guys is going to be right where you need to be. Alrighty, guys. I wanted to quick show you uh, the inside of one of these Nibby carburetors um, when we're talking about the jetting and changing the jets inside. For some people, that may be confusing or that you have never had one of these apart before. So you're going to have to remove the float bowl. Try to get you in the shot. This is a 24 millimeter uh, with the spigot style mounting. Um, the exact same internals for the flange mounted ones, like that's what's on our pit bikes. Um, you just need a special adapter to run these, but the inside is going to be the exact same. Taking the float bowl off is two Allen head screws. I believe they're three millimeter. And I use one of these uh, ball head Allens, a long, head, a long shank socket. Pulling the bowl off, you got to remove this little, I call it an anti-splash shield or a little cup that keeps the fuel around the main jet when you're going around sharp turns and bouncing around and stuff. The center main jet, right, right next to that, lower down, is the pilot jet. And the numbers are written on them on the side of the pilot jet and also on the side of the main jet. So what's in here right now is a 115 main and a 45 pilot jet. What I used to get the pilot jet out is a nice screwdriver like this. Something that's got a nice angle to it. Good wide blade, just wide enough for the jet. And then you just unscrew it. And it comes all the way out. And it's going to have, try to get that in here to focus a little bit, maybe. You can see a little bit of it, but the numbers are going to be written um, actually when you angle it like this, left to right. So this is a 45 pilot. With our 22 setup, we had a 40 pilot. And then with our 24 setup, we went really rich with a 48. So that's what we mean by changing that jet. The bigger you go on that, that's controlling the low end, the idle to about quarter throttle. Um, that's what that jet's going to affect. The main jet, the same procedure. I use a little bit wider flathead. Take that jet out. It's only going to be protruding down just a little bit. And like I said, those are also numbered. Um, and you can get extra main jets from Nibby, or when you buy a carburetor, they come with a couple main jets and an extra pilot jet. So we have the complete pilot jet kit and the main jet kit just because we were going to be doing so much tuning. And uh, that's why we have all those jets. So just wanted to clear up anything uh, in terms of, you know, what we mean by changing the jets. That's exactly what we're doing. We're taking the bowl off. We're removing a certain jet and changing it out with a different number, whether it's smaller or larger. That depends on how the bike is reacting um, in its current state. So one thing I didn't touch on was the needle, the needle clip position, and that's involving your slide and your needle. You'll need to remove that metal wire retainer and the opening is always to the slot where the throttle cable is. And then there's actually five different positions where there's a little E-clip that you guys can see you change that clip position to richen or lean out the mid-range. That's anywhere from quarter to three-quarter throttle. If you do richen the, the needle a lot, it's going to affect the idle and how it kind of idles. And then when you're just putting around, it may affect that too. Um, when I was really, really rich on the needle, it sputtered out a lot. You might see a video when we were riding with these carbs. It was really sputtery and kind of not boggy, but it just seemed like it was over fueling. It's probably because I had that needle at the fully richest setting, which is the fifth position. I bumped that up one 
and it took care of that issue. So just be aware that if you do go really rich on the needle, you may have issues in that mid range and low end. Um, just when you're putting around, it may act very, very rich and also could be very, very lean. If you go the other way and put the clip position at the top, making the needle way leaner. So hopefully that clears this, this stuff up. I wanted to throw this in the video when we were talking about the jetting specs. You can get a first-hand view of what's inside the carb um, a little bit closer up, but here's where I took that pilot jet out, main jet. And this, is, this tube is also removable, but you really just want to take the flathead or straight blade jet out of this adapter. So that's what we mean by changing main jet and pilot jet. That's the needle clip position. And then the air screw is on this side. And that also, like I said, the further you turn that in, the richer the low speed mixture is gonna be. The further you turn that out, the leaner it's gonna be. A good baseline setting would be around two turns out, possibly one and a half, depending on what the bike likes. Any more than that, or any less than that, that tells you your pilot jet isn't the right size for what you're doing. Um, the, air, the air screw's usually around one and a half to two turns on these sort of carburetors. So that gives you a good idea of jetting on these. And also one thing to note, these bowls are very difficult to put back on. You have to pay attention to this over, overflow spigot. It has to go kind of in between the float, but you have to get it kind of on the one side of the plastic splash shield and get the overflow spigot started in that hole. And then just give it a little wiggle and it'll all sit down. So that is how it's supposed to sit. Obviously you want your jets back in firmly seated um, before you do this, but just wanted to show you that. If you want to do a startup on yours quick, yeah. the 24, we'll, we'll, have, we'll also have links. We'll also have links to all this stuff in the description, including the jet kit that you will need to, to make this happen. And we'll leave the jetting numbers too in like a pinned yes. commenter in the description. But you guys can tell that chop is a little rich in the idle. I'll get a little shot of the exhaust. But they start good. I mean, it's, it's just a little rich, which I'm okay with. I mean, that's fine. You'll have to, once you rich in the low end so much, you're going to have to turn your idle up a little bit to compensate for that added fuel. Mix a little bit of air under the slide. To, and uh, same thing if you turn in. your air screw out, you know, if you turn your idle down, you know, right. technically out on the idle adjustment. And then obviously if you go in on your air screw, then bring you're the idle have up. To bring the idle up a little right. bit. Right, you're richening it that way. So, once again, too, if you're confused or beginning on jetting, we did have a video initially describing all the certain components of the car. I think me and Spark went over that, right? Me and yep. you did a whole spiel on that, went through all the specs and kind of how to tune on the, on the basic end of things. The only difference on mine would be the nibby throttle tube and the nibby throttle cable. A little bit shorter throw because I have more free play being taken up by the wheel. Nice and snappy. Extremely snappy, probably one of the snappiest carbs. Um, so we'll see how she, she starts and runs. And that was with a cold pipe. I mean, even <clears throat> even yours idles much better with the with the twenty two. Oh right, exactly. And that's like I said, stock header, but it's an eBay slip on.
you have questions on tuning, let us know in the comments. We'll put the specs for each of these setups in the description probably. Yep. And then possibly leave some links in the pinned comment to the uh, pilot jet kit because <laughs> what they give you in the carburetors themselves, you're only going to get one pilot and it's not going to be big enough. So you're going to want that uh, actual jet kit, which isn't that much. No. 20 bucks probably. If you guys have any other requests as to videos you want to see, maybe like uh, if, we have, if we have another 125 small wheel with a non-nibby carb to compare, that'd right. be sweet. So we'll try to get some more vids lined up here. Like I said, we might do a top speed video, but we'll have a riding video after this. So drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you in the next one.